Hello, everybody. I'm Mel Dore, the Aloha Sure Psychic, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Aloha Oracle, on Monday evening. I'd like to thank Aiden because he is behind the scenes uh, pulling all the levers and putting up the questions and everything. So uh, thank you. Next week, we'll be going live for the first time for my members. And um, you can join as a member by just going to my YouTube channel and there's a join button. Click that join button and there's three different tiers and that's all explained for you. So thank you for your support. One other order of housekeeping, be sure and find out about our September event in Chicago. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of people coming. Linda Grindle, uh, Aiden is going to be recording and editing. Let's see, we have Deanne, we've got Kevin Chandler, Kevin Lewis, me, Kim Copeland. So we've got a lot of um, people from the community coming, and it's a two-and-a-half-day seminar. It's going to be incredible. Well, I should say retreat, actually. So I'm here, and I'm getting ready to answer your questions. But before I start, there's a few things I wanted to touch on. First of all, I'd like to talk about Hamas accepted Egyptian Qatari ceasefire proposal, but as my guides told me, Israel won't. It's unfortunate that Netanyahu said that the Hamas ceasefire agreement did not meet Israel's core demands or Netanyahu's core, core demands, and that uh, Netanyahu is going to go ahead on the assault on the town of Rafa. In my opinion, my psychic opinion, that attack is absolutely genocide. The people in Rafa have nowhere to go, and they're already homeless, hungry, Where and they're giving leaflets for them to evacuate. But as I said, where are they going to go? Uh, Israelis are marching in the street against Netanyahu, rightfully so. I still see Netanyahu being taken out by the Israelis. I see him voted out, and I see him gone. I also see him in the international court, warrant issued for his arrest and three members of his uh, war cabinet. I don't know how far that will go. This is going to just coalesce the rest of the world against Netanyahu, not so much against Israel. As I've always said, I'm pro-Israel, I'm anti-Netanyahu, and I feel bad for the innocent Palestinians as well that are being killed for no reason. You know, we all know that it was not right for Hamas to attack Israel, and my guides have told me, as I've said many times, that attack was backed by Iran and Russia to divert attention from Ukraine and to try to destabilize the Middle East and to get votes away from Biden because Putin thinks if Trump wins, then Putin will get to do what Putin wants to do. And if Trump does win, which I see he will not, then Trump would give thumbs up to Putin to do whatever Putin wanted. So Putin's ploy will not work in the Middle East. I also intuit that Biden behind closed doors has told Netanyahu that if he goes through with this attack on Rafa, that the, that, uh, the United States will withhold any monies that they had pledged to Israel. So Netanyahu needs to watch his P's and Q's. A lot of people are protesting in Tel Aviv. A lot of people are protesting all over Israel, wanting their children back. And they're totally against Netanyahu's attack on Rafa. So the Israeli people are tired of this as well. And my guides show me, as I said, at the risk of being redundant, that Netanyahu will be taken out. Once again, Today, Donald Trump was held in contempt and fined another $10,000, but he was strongly warned by Judge Mershon that if he keeps this up, even though Mershon didn't want to, that Mershon would have Trump jailed. 
Now, some psychics in the community disagree with me, but we can all respectfully agree to disagree. But I intuit or predict that Trump is not going to shut his mouth. And I see Trump being held in contempt again and put in a special cell, maybe not in, not in a jailhouse, but in a special cell with secret service guards there just to make sure nothing goes wrong until he serves out the, the time the judge mets out. If Trump continues, my feeling is they'll allow him to watch the proceedings from another room inside the court. And so this way he can't cause any problems. But I do see him held in contempt at least two or three more times. And I see him held in contempt in other courts as well. You know, I also predict that the Georgia trial will take place before the election. So, and that judge down there is not going to put up with any shenanigans either. So the testimony is looking very bad for Trump. And they're saying the jury's eyes are just riveted on the prosecution and the witnesses on the trial. So, <clears throat> and I think that the prosecution is going to really rip apart Trump's defense team on um I think that now that Trump's defense team has times interviewed the witnesses, but then I think then that the prosecution gets another chance, I forget what it's called, but to talk to the witnesses again. So the prosecution is going to rip Trump's team, defense team apart. That's what I see coming. Oh boy. Marjorie Taylor Greene is at it again. She's putting together a small group to get Johnson out as Speaker of the House. You know, I'm thinking that Putin also indirectly is behind a lot of this because he wants chaos in the House. He wants a weak America. And so does Trump. Donald Trump wants that chaos in the House. And indirectly, Trump's behind it too. And that's going to come out as well. A weak America and a weak NATO gives Putin recourse to try and conquer Eastern Europe. And that's what Putin wants. Putin wants Trump back in office because if Putin can get Trump back in office, then Putin knows that Trump will give Putin a thumbs up to do whatever Putin wants. I don't see Trump back in office. The other thing is Christy Noam. Boy, she just doesn't stop with the animal cruelty. Um, she made a public statement that, they sh that she thinks Biden's dog commander should be shot and killed because the dog bit several Secret Service agents. She's trying to use killing animals as a way to gain her favor to run for higher political office. And really, she's just hanging herself. The other thing, and I see her coming down as well. Anybody, uh, I, I say don't buy her book. Take that money and, and donate it to the American Humane Society. Tim Scott is in the news. Tim Scott was um, interviewed, and when they ask him about, you know, he's a potential for a Trump uh, VP. And when they ask him about, you know, the whole idea of the Trump perpetrated about the election being stolen. Boy, did he tap dance around that. He wouldn't answer the question. So he didn't look very good. Uh, and no matter how hard the reporter pressed him, he just kept tap, tap dancing around it. <laughs> I heard that Putin is condemning scientists as traitors. You know, the same tactics that Putin is using or the same tactics the Bolsheviks used and the same tactics Hitler used, and the same tactics Mao Zedong used, uh, to condemn scientists as traitors, boy, it's it boggles my mind. Putin wants to restore global power in Russia as it was in the Soviet era, and he wants some of the old satellite countries that used to be under the former Soviet Union back, but he's not going to get them back. Putin is, is playing to the Christian orthodoxy in Russia, the same as the MAGA ultra-right-wing so-called Christians are doing here. He's using so-called orthodox Christian values, which really aren't Christian, as a way to control, and he's using those values as an opponent of what he says are liberal freedoms.
he's making friends with other dictators like China, Iran, and North Korea. In the Soviet Union, the former Soviet Union, they had mandates on artists, filmmakers, and uh, intellectual institutions. And that's exactly what Putin is doing. He's trying to silence artists, filmmakers, and <clears throat> cultural, cultural institutions. And for a while, it will look as if he is succeeding, but ultimately, my guides tell me he will not. I see him in being taken out. He's using almost the Hitlerian tactics to, to, to secure his lifelong presidency in Russia. But I see him gone. I really do. They say he's starting military training in schools. Uh, and in schools, they're teaching really radical nationalist ideology. And the mangas would like to do that here. You know, Stalin, Hitler killed 11 million people, mostly Jewish people. Stalin killed anywhere from 20 to 40 million people. And Putin is glorifying Stalin. For a long time after the fall of the Soviet Union, all the Stalin statues were taken down, but Putin has put a lot more of them back up, and Putin is glorifying Stalin. I understand that many, many Russians are fleeing Russia in an exodus. So my feeling is, is that ultimately Putin will be gone. He'll be taken out. I see Ukraine winning this war. They're not going to back down. And it's imperative that Ukraine does win this war. Uh, Putin wants to be like a Stalin or a Hitler, but he's going to fail miserably, even though it looks like right now he's gaining traction. My guides tell me he will feel, fail miserably. So that's just some of the comments I have. And now I'm ready to start answering your questions. Hello, Auntie Mel. My question is about the town surrounding Chernobyl, Chernobyl, Pripyat. Do you see ETs helping in restoring the environment from nuclear contamination? I don't see ETs restoring the environment from the nuclear contamination that's already there. It's going to take at least 20,000 years for some of those areas to be habitable by humans again. Uh, there's something called half-life. And I think half-life means the amount of time that it takes a radioactive substance to lose half of its radioactivity. It's called radioactive decay. And the idea is, is ultimately that if once it kind of loses all of its radioactive de decay, it turns into lead. But it takes a very long time for that. So 20,000 years, it tells you the half-life of some of these things that they put into the atmosphere and into the soil there. I do understand wildlife there, though, is coming back and doing pretty well. But it's going to be a long, long time before it de decontaminates. The Russian Orthodox Patriarch has been encouraging Putin's aggression against Ukraine. What will happen to the Russian Orthodox Patriarch Church after Putin's defeat? Well, I just kind of talked about that a little bit, that Putin is using the Russian Orthodox Patriarch as to say that, you know, they're, they're a nation of Orthodox Christian values. That's not Orthodox Christian values. Taking away people's freedom, no. And I see once Putin is gone, I'm seeing the Russian Orthodox Patriarch getting in a lot of trouble because of a lot of the hate that he is um, that he is promoted while he was the or Russian Orthodox Patriarch. Russian Orthodox Patriarch is very anti-LGBTQ, very anti-science, anti-everything. But Putin is just like Trump plays people. Putin is playing the Orthodox Patriarch to do Putin's work. And I got a funny feeling um, that patriarch is getting funded from Putin. So that patriarch is in Putin's pocket. And Putin is saying that this is what the Russian people want because the orthodoxy wants it. That's all going to come out. So I see the Russian Orthodox patriarch being gone. And I still see a Russian Orthodox church, but a patriarch put in place that will apologize for all of the crimes that this, crimes against humanity, that this uh, Russian Orthodox patriarch 
has helped to commit. Nothing against the Russian Orthodox Church at all. You know, it's it's a wonderful religion. It's just that the patriarch is hung up in power and politics, and it shouldn't be that way. But it'll all come out in the wash. I see the patriarch gone. A couple of days ago, something invisible hit one of my hanging plants pretty hard as I was standing in front of it. It even caught the dog's attention. Can you tell me what it was? I am picking up it was some kind a friendly spirit, not a bad one, passing through that for some reason wanted to get your attention, but not for a bad reason. That's how I see it. Were Gene Roddenberry and George Lucas channeling the universe to inspire the movies Star Trek and Star Wars? Will this, our, will this be our future in space travel, big angelic blessings? You know, I'm sure that they were a bit intuitive and a bit psychic in, in some of the things that they that they came up with in Star Trek, in, in Star Wars. Um, I remember watching Star Trek in the late 1960s and they had uh, talking computers and these discs that they would plug into the computer and the computer would talk or the disc would talk. And that was really prophetic because in those days, talking computer, oh my goodness, you, we didn't even think of that. And now look, we've got talking computers, we've got artificial intelligence, you know, the disc were probably, you know, uh, prophetic of about CDs and things like that. So I'm sure they got some of their creative ideas from a higher source. Absolutely. You know, our future in space travel, I see tremendous strides being made in that. Um, but as far to be able to go through wormholes and that sort of thing, and I won't even get into that explanation because I'm a science geek. We'll be here all day. It would be nice to think we could, but you know, going through one, then how do you get back? I see, you know, colonization on other, you know, on our moon and at some point other places in the universe. Unfortunately, most of the planets in our solar system are not habitable. Earth is probably the only one unless you've got special gear like spacesuits and things like that. I do see a mission to Mars within the next decade. So, and colonization on the moon as well. Is it true that tuning to the A440 pitch has negative impact on physical or psychic well-being? I don't know what the A440 pitch is. This is the first I've ever heard of it. But they do know that certain sound waves on a low frequency or super high frequency can have deleterious effects on our health and can have deleterious effects on our senses and all of that. In fact, those people that got sick in, that, in the embassy, I think the American embassy in Russia, I think Putin was trying sound, sound wave stuff on them. That's what made them ill. And I think it happened in Cuba as well. That's what I see. So I don't know about the A440 pitch, but yes, certain pitches can absolutely have a negative impact uh, on physical or, or and emotional, mental, and psychic well-being. I, I say the answer to that and see the answer to that is yes. I just don't know about the pitch A440. Hello, Mel. I'm wondering about two whistleblowers for Boeing. If they were taken out or died naturally, one was March and one was April. I think the one that just passed away probably died of natural causes. I think the first one did too. I think, though, if anybody else dies, then it's questionable. But I'm, I'm, but I'm positive the second was was natural causes. I, I don't see that that person was murdered. So, and I see more whistleblowers coming forward from Boeing. So they're not going to be able to shut everybody up. That's for sure. Democrats are running for the U.S. Senate in Maryland. Representative David Trone has spent over fifty million to beat Angela also Brooks who will be Maryland's first black female senator, who will win. I see the Democrats winning in Maryland. I do. Um, you know, the Dems are going to have to lock on a, knock on a lot of doors, but I am predicting a Democratic win in Maryland, and my feeling is Maryland will stay blue. That's what I see. I mean, I don't know who's who. Um, I don't know if they're Democrat, Republican, but I see the Democrats winning in Maryland in the Senate, in that Senate seat. Archaeologist Dr. Kathleen Martinez has been looking for Cleopatra's tomb for many years. Ooh, that's exciting. 
they seem to be getting really close to finding his location. Do you see her being the one to find Cleo? The answer is yes. I got cold chills. It's almost like, you know, the spirit of Cleopatra is leading her there. And who knows if it's been looted, probably some of it. But um, I see it as one of the biggest archaeological finds of the 21st century. Tuntankhamun's tomb was probably the largest archaeological find of the 20th century. And so Cleopatra's tomb is the largest one of the 21st century. But I see the number two. You know, sometimes as, as intuitives and psychics, our timing is sometimes wrong. So it could be two days, two, two months, two weeks, two years. But I, I predict intuitively that within two years, they will find Cleopatra's tomb and being able to prove it's her tomb. So... Oh, I got cold chills with that. My psychic light bulb went on. What is the life lesson for an individual with a soul contract that doesn't include marriage or children? You know, I don't have children. So, you know, maybe their life lesson is to, you know, by not having children and maybe not getting married, like maybe a priest or a nun, that they can help others through meditation and prayer. So, I don't know if it's a life lesson. I think it's a choice they make, obviously, and sometimes a choice to help others. And, and you know, some people are choosing that they don't want children because they don't want to bring children into this world the way it exists right now. So maybe that is a life lesson. What do you see for Kamala Harris after her years of being vice president come to an end? I don't know if she'll be president or not, but even if she's not president, she will stay active in politics. I don't know if she'll ever go back to Senate, but I see her being a very, very, very influential power in the Democratic Party. So she's going to do a lot for individual rights, a lot for democracy, um, a lot to help people. So after her vice presidency comes to an end, I don't see her leaving politics. I see her, she might not want to run for political office, but I see her active in politics. I do. When we cross over, will we still be able to listen for, to our favorite songs that we had here on earth? Well, I think it's a little bit different on the other side. Um, I think that if we wanted to hear music, we can. If we wanted to... Uh, do some of the favorite things we did here, yes. But my feeling is when we cross over, we all of a sudden become aware of who we are, but all the other past lives and just this whole oneness with the universe and with God or spirit. And so I think we try to humanize spirit because it makes us feel as if we can understand it. But it's so wonderful, I can't begin to understand it. So... I think, yeah, you can. Sometimes spirit comes through and they'll give me like the, the way my, my grandmother comes through. I'll pick up her favorite song or my grandfather, his favorite song, or when my mom comes through her favorite song. So my feeling to that is yes. Can I give you a message from my guides? I will go back to what I was told when I was at Lincoln's tomb. And my guides have been telling me this that justice will prevail in our country, our democracy shall endure, and the union will live on. And every time I get doubtful about our democracy, because it is precarious right now, my guides tell me that we all have to get out and vote. We all have to speak up against injustice, inequality, all of that. If we do that, our democracy will live on. And so don't be paralyzed by the fear. Take action. And my guides keep telling me, take action. And so that would be the message right now that I want to impart to everybody from my guides. It's been my pleasure. I've really loved doing this. Next week, we're going to be going live. So you can ask your questions, personal questions, whatever questions you'd like to ask live. And I'm so excited to do this. Tonight is for members only. I think Aiden will post it tomorrow for people who want to see it. 
If you'd like to get in touch with me to find out about our Chicago event, or for my cruise next year, or going to Peru next year, or for a reading, uh, you can call my office at 847-590-5411, or email me www.meldor.com. I'm going to leave you by saying that even though is the situation in the Middle East will become more intense, the Ukraine-Russian thing will become more intense, Putin is thinking about invading other countries with the help of China and North Korea, and it's going to seem, even with Trump, like things get real messy for a while, and we're in for a wild ride, but my guides tell me we're not going to have a third world war. There is not going to be a nuclear holocaust. Justice, peace, and democracy will ultimately prevail. But it's going to be a tough road to get there. It's up to us to keep the faith, and it's up to us to let our politicians in this country and throughout the world hear our voices that we will not tolerate genocide, we do not tolerate injustice, and that we accept all people, regardless of skin color, race, religion, sexual orientation, we are open to all. And I see American, I see America honoring those policies once again. So until next week, namaste, aloha, stay well, stay safe. And thanks to Aiden for helping me with this. And I want to say thank all of you all for your loving and your kind support. Until then, 